All right, Jeff T. Lowe, our social media guy. Danny has a number one through five behind his back. What number is it? Two. Two. It is not two. Carl. Six. Just kidding. Three. Yeah. I'll oh. take... Um, I will take the first overall pick. All right. First overall goes to Carl. One through four, Chief. Two. Dave. Four. I'll take two. All right. White Zach Dave will take two. All right. So one through three to me. I'm going to take one. Um, I'll pick third. One or two, Jeff. One. One. Chief. Fuck. I'll do, uh, I'll take the five spot. All right, Jeff. So you have the number four spot. Chief is the number five spot. Order goes Carl White, Zach, Dave, Eddie, Chef, Chief. All right, Bay Mang, today is Monday. It is April 19th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Special guest on Zoom for Snake Draft Monday. It's his second appearance. It's none mm. other than Jeff D. Lowe. I'm, I'm excited. This is as wheelhousey as wheelhouse gets for me. Because it's like something I enjoy, but it's not work. So I can turn my brain off and just enjoy it without having to worry about it being work. Uh, not that I don't enjoy movies, but this is like the most, because it's not my job. Like people want me to do a, like a fast food and chain restaurant podcast. My biggest reason for not wanting to do it is because I enjoyed talking about it and it not being tied to work. That's what, listen, uh, us four personally obviously love you, Jeff. We, we go on your show the dozen all the time, and we know how much work you put in. And we always say, like, oh, if we got a movie category, it'd be good to get you in there. But you, you wanted to, you know, take the top off here. You wanted fast food. You wanted to enjoy yourself. So, you know, it's the least we could do for you, Jeff. Casual. Yeah, I, I, I've been asking you for a while. I've been like, hey, next time, just don't do movies. I did TV last time. We did TV Families, uh, which I didn't get the concept until minutes beforehand. Um, though that's not that doesn't mean you can't do well because I know Robbie Fox absolutely didn't understand the previous one and then ended up winning by a uh, wide margin. So people are yeah. saying that his pick of you as one of the nerds sealed the draft room. How do you feel about being selected as in the nerd draft? That was my, my only actual comment in the draft is so, I, so you guys know this. This is this is the one issue you do when you make these drafts. It's somebody says, "How did you not pick blank?" Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most it's, common reply, but somebody. I, I'm, I'm glad he picked me, so I'm happy he won. But somebody replied and said, "How did nobody pick Elon Musk?" And I just want—I said not it multiple a real times throughout the podcast. I'm like, you could yeah. go with like uh, Stephen Hawking or blah blah blah. You got to try to think outside the box because the but you I, know, I, the I want easy to just hammer that boring home ones. Yeah, I want to hammer home for he's not a nerd. He's just a smart rich guy. Like that doesn't make he's a guy who wants to be a nerd. He's a he's a smart guy. He's rich. Like nerd is a different ballpark. Didn't here. what was his? I think. It was a daughter. The weird spelling with Rachel or whatever. That's kind of nerdy. I think Elon Musk definitely. I think, I think Elon Musk is a nerd. I would, I, I would that's definitely. That's try hard nerdy. That's try hard nerdy. Yeah, okay. George I understood. Lucas is a fucking nerd. George Lucas coming up with, with a guy with no feet who plays the drums in Java's Palace. That's some nerdy shit. Just putting letters together because you can for your because you're rich. That doesn't make you a nerd. Is George Lucas get out nerded by his fans though? Absolutely, oh, one hundred. Yeah, like that's yeah. that's kind of I don't know. But the Musk <laughs> thing, like with that the the gif or the meme of him on Rogan, where he's like trying to smoke weed and look cool. <laughs> In that that's, moment, that's, it's like this guy's such a fucking. Yeah, nerd. yeah. that's that's a chief. That's a great counter. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Have you ever seen um comic or uh, uh the fucking insult dog from? Um, yeah, yeah, Triumph, yeah, Triumph, yeah, the insult dog. Ronnie goes to the Star Wars like and a menace. It, yeah, right. I actually, do a Triumph impression. Do um, it. I did. I did. I we used to do it on LCB, and we it, we called it Conquest the Slander Dog because we said we didn't have the rights to call him Triumph. Ah, uh, maybe I'll do it in the middle. I can't do it. I don't want to do it on the spot. I, I got you. Understood. 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 I'll, I'll do it though. Well, that was Robbie's congratulations. He did win the nerd draft, so we got a little nerd banter in there. Yep. Jeff. Jeff. Uh, Jeff gave a speech for him. So congrats to Robbie. If you didn't know, obviously we did pickings, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube, which gets posted every Monday, as well as the audio version, Jeff has a great background of some type of chain restaurant. He 
He's also wearing a Bloomin' Onion hoodie. So he's ready to go for this one because today's draft topic is casual dining, a sit-down chain restaurant. Yep. Looks like a nice bone-in ribeye on that sweatshirt next to the Bloomin' Onion. He's got a lot going on. Yeah. Oh, oh, is yeah, the burger there, though? Is the burger there, though? The Mad Max burger? Is White Sox Day's burger there? Anymore. No, you, you got the uh, yeah, you got the ribeye. You got the Victoria's fillet. You got the bread. You got the blooming onion. Yeah, you, you nice told me that, that that was never on the menu, ever. And you no, were it, incorrect. No, it, it was. It was renamed. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was the restaurant. My parents used to trick me into thinking moment. we were going like fine dining when I was growing <laughs> up for my birthday when I was like ten years old, and I would get the Mad Max burger. I don't understand what's so funny about that. <laughs> to say that your parents it's, tricked you is just I mean, like yeah, because yeah. you thought you were going to like some five you know five star Michelin star restaurant. Well, could, could Carl, can you explain why that was funny? And it's it was a great dozen moment. Yeah, I mean we were we were doing trivia and he had asked for like the best selling item and Dave like came out emphatically enthusiastically and was like Mad Max burger final answer done. It was like well, whoa, I didn't whoa, say whoa, final whoa, whoa. answer. <laughs> Why is it the Mad Max burger? And Dave this was like, the first I thing that popped in my head. had it before, and it was fucking... It was good. Awesome. It was awesome. He goes, it was an wait, awesome Carl burger. Goes, wait a second. So we're just going to outrule all the steaks, everything else, for the most expensive item on the menu, because Dave had a good burger once? And, and it was a great Dave one. goes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... Like, he goes, I, yeah, I had a great burger. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I still would be... Mm-hmm. I, I would guess that's a top three selling entree at the restaurant. Maybe. Good I don't burger. Know. Um, it's a good burger. So there is a list we're going off of here so we know what is in play and what's not in play. So it'll be interesting to see the controversy in this one. Uh, Do you want to reiterate your point that you made prior to starting recording today? About your snippiness. Your iron fist. Oh yeah, I mean, I just, I just, I, I, if, people, if I'm red at, I gotta be red at. So, if there's a why something, didn't you wear the hoodie today? I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a fucking stickler on this too. By the way, good. Uh, like, there's a very clear line between fast food, fast casual, and sit down. And this is a sit down draft. Yeah. So I'll, I'm gonna be a stickler as well. Good. So I, we're not, we're not drafting Panera, is what you're saying. Correct. You're yes. not drafting Panera. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm I happy think, Jeff's here because Jeff is Jeff can you know. Running the dozen, you can. We, we kind of have the same problems. That is, in some you ways. know what? That's like the the fist gripping. Yes, meme. exactly. I got a, I got an ally here, and I'm happy he's here. Mm-hmm. So let's go. I'm, I'm a people. I'm a people's commish, though. I'm going to say that. I, I, I disagree. I think that Cracked Review was absolutely a top selling album of the '90s, <laughs> and I still haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> Who's the artist, Dave? Hootie and the Blowfish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Okay. So we've cleared up. We know exactly what our inventory is. Yes. Yeah, we do. Uh, there, you know, there were some on those lists. There's even some in the list. We use the Wikipedia list, by the way, that I was a little iffy about too. Mm-hmm. But we'll see when we'll it comes up. Happens. Like there, are, there's also a few that aren't on there that I know would qualify. Yeah. So bring so, it up, and we'll, yeah. we'll 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 make a call. Okay. Okay. Um, before we do get into it, though, we got to talk about Miller Light, guys, because it's the beer where we could just hang out and we could be ourselves. It's this official snake draft beer. It is the official snake draft beer. You get home, it's a Monday, pop mm-hmm. a nice ice cold Miller Lite, enjoy the draft, watch it on TV, enjoy Jeff's background. We love Miller Lite. Yeah, I need I need one too after dealing with you people. So shitting on my picks relentlessly, it's nice to just kick back with something that we all enjoy that I won't get criticized for. So that's yeah. Miller Lite. Listen, in a world full of seltzers, IPAs, fucking goblet glasses, where everyone tries to get too fancy. It's nice to kick back and just be yeah. fucking old school. That Always white can. Yes. That white can doesn't change. You don't need a goblet for yes. that. Beer for the fucking people. Mm-hmm. All right? Great memories with your friends drinking this stuff. So uh, next time you're getting beers with friends, make it Miller time. Luckily, you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. Or you can go to MillerLite.com forward slash redline to find the delivery options near you. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs. Per 12 ounces, Dave, swipe up to get some beer. Swipe up to get some beer. There we go. How do you feel about that, Jeff? The other day, uh, we were, Dave was reading a podcast ad and he told the people to swipe up for the product. I mean, you could have used that <laughs> clip as the, so, as the social clip. I, so you swipe I can't hate. I can't hate because like, I'll open up LCD sometimes and I'll be like, this match is sponsored by. And I, got, I just I say it like it's, a, it's an episode of trivia. So mm-hmm. I, I get it. Yeah, it's yeah, just Freudian slip. Like, Dave, Dave did say, though, if you're listening on Instagram, 
<laughs> I don't think that's true. I mean, no, hey, I here's one. To, no, hey, you, you said it hey, word for word. Hey, Jeff, what temperature does water freeze at in Fahrenheit? <laughs> Here he goes. Oh, this is my fault, wa- now. Yeah, this is like an old school ricochet shot. Yeah, now I mean, it was now, the first thing that came to my this mind. This is now how I know Dave's actually mad at me. I'm not mad at you. I'm not yeah. mad at you. Mm. I'm not mad, mad at you. At I mean, you guys nitpick. Like, if We're I having would've... a snip off. Yeah. Jeff, do you know what temperature water freezes at in Fahrenheit and Celsius? Isn't it just 32 degrees? 32 yes. degrees. And what about uh, uh, Celsius? That I won't even pretend to know. Zero. That. It's zero. It's and base boiling is 100. Yes. Jeff didn't know either, so ha. Huh. Well, he knew Fahrenheit. I mean, uh, that's so just I'm a Celsius guy. fucking crazy to me. <laughs> you didn't I've, know always been, I've always been Celsius. <laughs> but if I've, Ever since we started this job, I've been fucking Celsius. So don't tell me I'm not Celsius. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense because they used the metric system in fucking Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Oh, but I have to. I have to add one Dave. I have to add one Dave story. I hate. I hate disrupting the pod here. But I just have to. If you watch the dozen when the three you guys were on recently, we Kyle and I, KB and I, like dropped to the floor laughing when you mentioned Harvey, Harvey Unga. Unga. Yeah. Um. You're because literally, twenty minutes before that match. KB and I were discussing their niche category for the tournament. And we said, will you do flags? Because because I, I I personally think, like Chicago, if you're in the championship and you know you're going to go up against Kai, KB, Nick, and Frank, you're going to probably scan through the list of world capitals, right? Like, why would you not course, give yourself yeah. a shot? So at least give it a look, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, I think flags might be more protective for you because flags is tougher to study. It's not just a list of words. you got to remember the colors. I'm pretty and good with flags. We, we did a test, and I said, that's Tonga. I know that because White Sox Dave had a Tongan neighbor growing up. <laughs> yes, he played um, in the NFL, and-, and his sister was my age, and <laughs> yeah. she and married so- Harvey Unga, who had like 1,200 yards rushing when we were in college, and it all tied together, and minutes, I thought that's what you were trying to do. Minutes before that, that match, we mentioned that, and he's like, that means Dave's known at least 0.5% of all Tongans ever. <laughs> yeah, like, he's lived. from one of those islands where like one in 20 people So for you to reference it, was like un- the NFL. It was unbelievable. Speaking of which, is there going to be a prize for the dozen tournament? Uh, which uh, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because there is a prize that I apparently had just shipped out a week ago to me for fantasy football. I was going to say, is there a fantasy football uh, prize? That's- there is. That's very cool. I'm worried because I asked for what it looks like, and they said you'll see. That's not the best sign hmm. in the world. Because I got to um, be honest with you, uh, Jeff. We we completely forgot to bring it up, but the boys are a little salty that we never got our prize. No prize. It, yeah. Well, we, the it punishment was, was really bad. The punishment, the problem was we didn't initially come up with the prize. We didn't ask for money. And then I realized very close to the championship that we had to do that. I went through a trophy service and I got something very fucking cool made. Um, I hope, I hope, because I put time. We'll we'll cross that bridge when I get it. So for the it people that be didn't know, comp- yeah, it was the first place, second place game. We, we were in the championship round. And if we lost, we would have the punishment. So we cared. Like we were into it. And we're like, yeah. And then White Sox Dave started a rumor that we're all going to get three grand. I swear it? to God, that's a terrible rumor. I didn't yeah. start the rumor. I was told that in New York City. I'm like, so what's the hey, price, Jeff? You owe me three grand. It was thirty six hundred grand, Jeff. It's being okay. That's ridiculous. <laughs> why that you did that? But it, it will be. It's remedied with something, and then I'll remedy it again at the beginning of the season. And Jeff, I, just pay us our fucking money. You owe us three have, grand. See, and here's we didn't the other thing. Any money. I don't even give a shit about the prize. I give a shit that the second and last place teams haven't done the punishment yet. Because if that oh, was no, that's me, gonna happen. That's gonna happen closer to the season. If though. that was me. Like, I would have been fucking crucified for not doing it. No, that's absolutely going to happen because those are people that still aren't going to mesh very well mm-hmm. in a room together. Um, but the dozen, it is a, like a massive trophy, and then there's something else I can't reveal yet. Okay, but it's kind of cool. It's it's pretty neat. Is it our three thousand dollars? Thirty six hundred. Shit, rumor from White Sox. I I mean, it wasn't a rumor. Is like something salacious. You start like I sincerely thought that's what it was. <laughs> I wasn't positive, and I told her, I'm like, I'm not positive this is actually it, but this is what the what everybody was saying out in New York. They said it was $3,600 to the winning team. All right, let's start the draft. Carl, you're on the clock. <clears throat> All right, so if you go to the Wikipedia page, list of, cha- list of restaurant chains in the United States, and it's under the casual dining tab, there's like the full inventory from this. And so in going through the prep, you put them together. There's just one that jumped out, and I individually rated all of these places. This was the highest rated place. It just jumps out. I don't think I can get it anywhere else on this list. I'm taking Benny Hanna one overall. Ooh. I'm taking Benny Hanna like one overall. 
I love going to a Benihana. I it's think fun. it was I had three years in a row where like my 12, 13, 14 year old family birthday dinners, I was like, I want to go to Benihana. I love sitting around an Asian steakhouse like mm-hmm. that. And it's just like it's fun. I like a Benihana. I'm taking Benihana. It's a unique experience. I think I can get other experiences later. But I'm taking. Back There's now. very few things in the world that bring me joy the way an onion volcano does. <laughs> like those things are so fucking sweet. The way they stack them up and they have the smoke and the the steam coming out of them. I love a good. I love a Benihana. I love that hibachi style. It's great. It's a good pick. I'm bummed. I thought I'd be able to get that in like the third round. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think it'd be there in the second. No. I no. was planning on taking it with my wrap around. Were you? Yeah. Okay. It, it's a really good, good pick. Good. You got. We got to say the fact. We got to say the, the 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 one fun fact about Benihana. Yep. Steve Aoki. Steve Aoki's dad. Yep. What? Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's so go Steve ahead. Aoki's You're our dad? expert, Jeff. Please educate yeah, us. Steve Aoki's dad is the founder of Benihana. And the he's DJ. a DJ. He's a DJ, yeah. God, yeah. that fried rice is unbelievable. Oh. I didn't see it coming. I did not see it yeah, coming. Yeah, so again, and I think if you if you look at the list, it just seemed like it was the only player on the board who could do the things Benihana does. So I think I'm the only one who has that type of production. Yep. Okay. Dave, what are you thinking about? I mean, I I have no idea what direction. I've been to Benihana, but I don't particularly like Asian food. I don't dislike it. I don't like it. It's just kind of a whatever to me. I'll eat it. Um, but the experience is great. Um, what about sitting I at know, a table with strangers and you're yeah, on a date it's, and it's like fun, there's yeah. another date? Yes. That's yeah. a cool. That's a cool thing. It's like a crutch. If you want, yeah, you if you can, want it, if you, you can, want it, it's that's a conversation cool. crutch. If you need it, if you're yep. having a hard time with your date, absolutely. All right. Benihana. Benihana, fucking wow, yes. And Benihana off the bird, number one overall. I was worried about Carl picking first because I wanted this pick 1-1 one, one if I could have gotten it. And we're talking big tits, <laughs> tight white shirts. We're talking chicken wings and beer and football. We're talking Hooters. And that's a, a great sponsor of Barstool Sports. A great sponsor of Barstool Sports. Uh, we love Hooters. And if you talk shit about their wings, you're a fucking moron because those wings are fucking fantastic. The CEO was on the show a couple months ago. That's, yeah, that's that right. is true. Mm-hmm. The that's right. Um, Hooters, I like. I would have taken that one one. I would have taken it as early as I possibly could have. I could not be more elated that I have Hooters. It's we're talking experience. And you're a tits guy, right? I love tits. I love a good, <laughs> but I mean, busty like pair a, of tits. Like a tits or ass, tits. Yeah, tits all day. Tits. <laughs> Smash those babies right in my face. <laughs> I want you, I want your white little tank top cut so low that I leave you a 300% tip on a $100 tab just because, like, I think I have a 1% of 1% chance of getting your number after you, I leave that restaurant. You foul boy. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. But you, uh, I'm I just saying my right. yes, condom on right. the ground. You're right. You're right. Holy fuck. You're right. You're just saying yeah. what we would like to say. I'm saying what you guys all think every time you step foot into that that <laughs> palace, that majestic palace. Jeff, the, the clean game show host, are you okay with this? Is this too off limits here? I, I do a show with Ken Jack and Troll Ballin, so. <laughs> it's pretty horny crew. How do you feel about tits, Jeff? I mean, you were, that this is significantly less horny. You wanted you wanted to be the brother of a sister character in our last draft. You wanted to fuck. <laughs> Oh, Kelly, Kelly Bundy. Bundy. No, I didn't. You guys are twisting words. I said Kelly Bundy is a smoke show, and it'd be weird if I was drafting her to be my sister. But you did, and but you drafted her because, because she's, she's not my sister. <laughs> but you said you want to fuck her because she is going to be your sister. In it's, this it's, it's that's what makes it all weird. Yeah, that's yeah, what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah, but I had to draft her because she's a great character. Couldn't let that slide. Wow. Okay. Hooters. I mean, all that aside, Dave. Fantastic pick. Mm-hmm. I love some Hooters. They don't get enough credit for their decor either. You no, like the I decor? love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you Wood feel team. you could. Yeah, you could walk in in January, mm-hmm. snow outside, and you walk in, and I'm in Tampa. You yep. know? it's permanent Tampa. Yeah, you got yes. those. It's it's a uh, pine wood, just for the people out there. I believe. Oh, thank you. I'm pretty sure, but um, it's just it's it's Hooters. I mm-hmm. love Hooters. Okay. Hooters off the board. Thank you, White Sox. Dave, Would you work that. at Hooters, Dave? Would no. you be a kitchen guy? Would you be a wing guy? No, I always uh, like. How do you do that? How do you get anything done? Like, how, well, that <laughs> and would that eventually? No, oh, you'd be a good wing guy. I'd be a taste tester for that's him. a uh, like like Frank's trying to do with the hot dogs. That's always a Halloween costume that plays too for girls. Yeah, it's easy. Yes, always plays if you're a Hooters girl. Mm-hmm. Always. Um, okay, I'm up. 
I'm going to go with one. There's a lot of these ones that I think are on the way the, the same wavelength, but I think this one's just a little bit better, and I can't scoop it from – I can't scoop the other one from Jeff. I'm going to go with Chili's. I think Chili's, overall, they do everything very solid, and I, I don't think anyone turns their nose up it. It's got a good reputation. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good across the board. I think Chili's is the best of those uh, – I don't have an ounce of problem sitting down and getting a burger or some steak fajitas or whatever nope. from Chili's. Yeah, it's, it's become like they, a cliche joke, but the airport, like you always, you know, like yep. if, if they they always have them in airports, and that is usually I feel like your safest option. Yeah, like you can go there, Absolutely. you know, you're when you get are in need of something at an airport, you can almost always rely on sitting down at a, no matter the mm-hmm. time of day, sitting down at it is it is the most iconic sit down chain. Obviously, chain it's McDonald's, but. In the country, like I, it is the big fucking chili glowing red. Though they changed, by the way, rest in peace to the welcome to Chili's viral kid. He died like two days ago. It's oh, very whoa. sad. Oh, I had to yeah. just had to had to throw that out there. That's, tragic. Um, that's I I think the tr- chicken crispers are garbage. A lot of people disagree with me, but I I think Chili's they got the little sprinkles and the milkshakes. They do everything well, mm-hmm. and that's it's I think it's the most recognizable like sit down chain. Bottomless queso. Yep. How about, how about this one? How about this one? I want my baby back, baby yep. back, baby back. Really? back. Yes. Yes. Baby what a great jingle! That is true. Baby, baby, baby back, back, back ribs. They had it. If you got a good, you're right. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. If you had a good, they had they had in sync do that commercial once. Joey Fatone got crushed by a box of barbecue uh, baby back ribs on a beach, and then he he had the barbecue sauce line. <laughs> fucking incredible. I, I love that. You know that, Jeff. Incredible. It's a big commercial. He, he, I mean, he does his homework on on sit down chain restaurants. This, this I'm a, I again. This is, this is what I love. Yeah. Yeah. Four's a spot tough to draft out of, by the way. Yeah, it Just is. So you know, Jeff. Very you, tough. We're Jeff. putting a lot on your shoulders here as the expert. So you're on the clock. Not when you get your fucking number one overall pick. I had well, there's one tier S place on my list, and I'm wearing it. I'm sitting inside of it in this green screen studio. It's it's amazing. It's the best sit down chain restaurant. It's the best steaks. Fuck Texas Roadhouse. They come show you the steak. Get out of town. Outback doesn't need to show you the steaks. Outback Steakhouse is my number one. One A, one B, doesn't matter. Easy. This is like that viral clip of the NFL draft. I don't know what team it was where like they saw their pick fall to them and they laughed at the team that picked before them. It was them. the Vikings. Okay. Yeah. Wait, who did, oh, because they, they laughed got at the Eagles. Yeah. Jordan Jefferson, right? Yep. Smitty's somewhere here in that going crazy. Um, <laughs> this, You're in this an Outback. Is, you brought Smitty to Outback? Bloomin' Onion, Gold Coast Coconut Shrimp, Victoria's Filet, Ayers Rock, New York Strip, Alice Springs Chicken. Go down the list. Mad Max of that menu. No misses. And now, Kookaburra Wings, they redid all their chicken, and now their chicken is breaded in the Bloomin' Onion seasoning. Whoa. Wow. My mouth's watering right now. High quality uh, soft drinks. The syrup is high quality, like McDonald's esque. <laughs> The Aussie Tizers are can't miss. It's a, do you it's a work can- for Outback, Jeff? Yeah. Is there, do you got is a little it, under the table deal? Are you sticking an edit on me? Best. Yeah, they sent me free fucking shit. Whatever. <laughs> no, I go. I legitimately get it once a month in New York. I get a takeout or delivery. Takeout because they don't deliver to my apartment. Um, so you, you make the effort. You go there. I, I, I absolutely. I've always loved Outback. Mm-hmm. My parents didn't even pretend. They were like, we're going out. I would go to Enviro Beach, Florida. That's where I first ever went. Great spot. <laughs> the best and to be transparent it's, 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 it's the best they've done ads on redline too and we yeah, all yeah, like yeah, outback yeah we love yeah. Outback. like there's no there's i no. said this out loud multiple times prior to them even being an advertiser with us i was in vegas this like four or five years ago and we were looking for a quick place to not fast food but sit down get a good meal and not have to put in a reservation or anything and i got a i got a bone in ribeye from outback in vegas and to this day it's one of the best steaks i've ever had i've said it out if loud you, and i'm not embellishing it's not a it's not an ad it if was you ever so feeling good. real douchey you ever want to be like a douche like me sit down at the table and be like do you like that bread what kind of bread do you think it is and they say pumpernickel dunk on them it's actually brown honey wheat bread it's not pumpernickel <laughs> bread it's delicious <laughs> bread go. Nice Coast right, coconut shrimp victoria's filet mid rare Broccoli, no butter on the side, cooked well done. House salad, no onions with ranch. That's my meal. That's my order. That's a nice, I've been that's a well rounded meal. I've been looking for a good tomah- tomahawk dunk at Outback, too. Yeah. So I appreciate that. I've been looking to throw it's it like, out. How do I dunk on somebody? Yeah. Ask them if that's pump or nickel. Take them to Outback. <clears throat> good pick, Jeff. I also like that it's Australian. Like, you could just, it's kind of funny. 
Yeah, there's, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a good wrinkle in there. It's like, yeah, it's Australian. actually. And last thing on that, we have an Aust- a par- we read this the other day. I think somebody on the lights camera bar still read it. And noted like they have an Australian friend who they said like, does Outback bother you? They go, no, Outback. Like they're like, no, like Outback doesn't bother us. The only thing that bothers Australians about Outback is that the guy doing the voiceover in the commercial is an American doing an Australian accent. Oh, that would bother me too. Okay. Wasn't that the same thing with Foster's beer? Like they were just Foster's American for beer. Hey, it is kind of fun to crush a Foster's at Outback. Fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. (laughs) Just for the, yeah. Yeah. Is that, that's like cultural immersion. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, is Foster's actually Australian or is that American? And they just like, I think it's, I I, I think it's like the Subarus where we made those Australian somehow Uh, too. I'll have a Miller Lite though, for the record. For yeah. for sure. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, yeah. I lie. I don't. We love I don't Miller Lite. Enjoy that. Yeah, it's piss water. Um, Chief, you're up. All right, I'm going. Uh, you know, look at it. I. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Uh, <laughs> just wait two more seconds, and I'll say <laughs> it out loud. Uh, I'm taking Morton's. So I'll, if someone's going to be the fancy boy in the first round, I'll be the fancy boy. Morton Steakhouse. I think it's, it was founded in Chicago. Um, so if you're looking for like an actual nice meal, this is like a place where you go to for like high school graduation parties or dinners or th- special occasions. It's going to be great. It's going to be great every time it is a, sta- a staple. So I have no problem being like the hoity-toity fancy boy in the first round after Outback nope. and Chili's and Benihana. What do you mean? Nope. I am no prison. I agree. Oh, okay. Um, I went there like two birthdays ago. I met my dad out in the Morton's in Oak Brook. Like, yeah. Midway. It point. is like the Western suburbs. Like that's like, I would never go to a Morton's in the city. No, no, no. But, right. Like when you're out by your parents and you're, you know, like it's, it's like the suburban steakhouse. It's a, it's, I don't want to say it's too bad. It's a chain, but that's like, it can compete with any good steakhouse. That's just like, a absolutely. One-off. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So the reason I reacted strongly is because anytime chief starts to pick and he goes, okay, look it. <laughs> okay. If you look in historically speaking, mm-hmm. when you kind of take a breath and you go, oh, okay, okay. Look it. You think um, something shitty's coming. Well, I mean, we just had the compilation Danny put out, and but I'm all those sure picks were one good. Of those picks was pre- <laughs> Morton's is a great place. I like a Morton Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. I like their logo. I like their bag. I like the coloring that they have. They they really bought into like the shiny silvery yep. font, and uh, that's a nice that plays up well on the menu. Seventy two locations in the U.S. Just putting that out there, yeah. just so people of like I know people are like, what are you talking about? Well, it's a great steakhouse. It's, it's not yeah. like you can have a lot of those in the same area. I mean, yeah. It's like a high. It's a high yeah. end place. I've never mm-hmm. had it actually. It's very it's, fucking it's awesome. Yeah. The sides great are great. Pork chops. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you like you can throw a dart at the menu. You're gonna get something good. And you're so, gonna spend a lot of money. You're gonna spend yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. But it is like I want like if I'm if I'm building my my list, I want a fancy boy steak place, and that's of the ones that are available. I think that is the king. There's one other one that's. Right in the, yeah, in the there's, category. There's a big other one. There's one big other one. There's a big. I other prefer one. this one to that okay. one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, the original location in Chicago closed in November because of COVID. That's kind of a bummer. That is a bummer. I didn't know that. No, okay. That's too bad. So back no. to me. Yep. Back to you. I'm doing another fancy boy pick, and this is along the same uh, line of thinking as Carl's with his Benihana. There is only one of these, and it is a fun experience. I'm going with the melting pot. A little fondue. Oh, wow. I haven't heard that name in a while. The Melting Pot, another suburban, like, when, I remember, like, taking a girl. Strip mall I, restaurant. Yeah, you think so? Well, oh, I think yeah. of it as um, there's one out in Woodfield, uh, which is a big mall by us. Uh, again, Western shout suburbs. Out Trill shout out Shout out Trill Ballins, yeah. Naper, Naperville Cubs fan. And uh, But that is, like, that's another, like, I'm going to treat my senior year girlfriend to something nice. We're going to melting yes. pot. And yes. and it is like I like I love a dinner with a little activity. So I like Korean barbecue places where you cook the meat yourself on that little fire pit. I love a Benihana. I love the melting pot because um, you just you're it's interactive. You're doing stuff. You're you're cooking your own vegetables. You're eating your own cheeses. You're getting your own steak going. So I, I'm I'm very happy with my dining experience through two rounds with the melting pot. It's a date yeah, place. A it's a great I, I, date pick. For sure. No, no, that's all I have. To be honest, no, I've never heard of it. I don't think I've never been either. Good you, when he said there's only one, I was like, "That's why I looked at you." There's like only that. one like fondue place like that. Only one fondue chain. He gets okay. unique. I like unique value. Mm-hmm. Jeff, you like fondue? Yeah, and I, I like I I picture it. There's one by me in Austin where it's like it's next to like a FedEx, <laughs> and then like a couple of like strip mall like like maybe like a uh, like a frozen yogurt place like it mm-hmm. just sits there i stabbed myself in the hand at a melting pot by accident in the summer of 2010 well in new jersey that's you know? another key point like it's a little there's a little danger involved you can't spill that yeah, oil. You got, and, and you you don't want salmonella you better cook that meat thoroughly through you're putting your chicken in there you better change the oil it's going to be 
It, it's like an interactive experience with a little bit of danger. I'm not saying they're bad picks, but it's very cheap. That they make two picks that just have like very well. I know like I, there are other things I want to get, and those categories are deeper to me. Okay. So I have I know like I feel like I'm going to be able to get one of my doesn't matter, but yeah, like those I wanted either Benny Hanna or Melting Pot, and when Carl took Benny Hanna early. I was like, I better get Melting Pot now, just in case someone is thinking the same way I'm thinking. All right. On that note, it's back to you, Jeffrey. Uh, I'm picking a place. I'm glad. This is my number two. I got my number one and number two overall place because this place, not only do you get the good home-style food, you get arguably the most iconic table in all of dining. It's that one circle table behind the hostess stand. Some might argue the spaghetti factory trolley car or the Pope table, Buca de Beppo better. I don't say that. And you get the general store. How many places got the general store? I'm going Cracker Barrel. Uh, Cracker Barrel has great breakfast, incredibly solid lunch and dinner, and even if you hated all that, you walk on out into that incredible store to oh. get the candy, the mm-hmm. old school Malamars, the uh, McFuddy's Pepper Elixir, their Dr. Pepper, the tea game, big checkers, fucking rocking chairs. Cracker Barrel, easy pick. Easy. I fucking love the Cracker Barrel. It is so fucking good. I'll say this. I think of all the restaurants available to us to draft here, I've been to Cracker Barrel the most. Really? Yeah, because at my old job, it was always at these like manufacturing su- manufacturing sites in like rural areas. So I'd stay at like a shitty hotel off the highway, and my dining options were like Somebody, McDonald's yeah. and Cracker Barrel. And I would choose Cracker Barrel for the little extra money, a little extra time, sit down, have a nice meal, usually alone. I was usually alone. I would just sit there. I like with that those, though. Yeah, and you get it. You get it. You know, you're on your phone. You got a newspaper. You got those giant menus. And you have a nice meal quietly by by yourself before you have to go into like deal with fucking idiots. And so I I have a very. I was hoping I would get Cracker. Barrel I was going to draft it next. Yeah. So Cracker Barrel is a great pick. I uh, there was one that right down the street from where I grew up at 88 and 59 out in Chicago suburbs, and I would do the same thing. I'd go alone, and the biscuits and gravy, like on a Saturday morning, oh. are heavenly. Heavenly. I, I love that pick. You ever notice, too, how somehow, some way <clears throat> that their sign is always to the moon? Like, yes. it's always higher than yes. everybody yeah. else's? <laughs> like Great it's advertising. It's a fucking giant drop. It, Great advertising. It is, and that's like one of those things where it's like you come up over the hill on a highway, and you're like, yeah. that's where I'm going. Like, that's if they surveyed, like, tall landmarks in America, it'd be like all the skyscrapers, and it'd be cracker, <laughs> cracker barrel, barrel signs. Yeah. I love their logo, too. Yeah, it's like nice. Their colors and yeah, I, you I, love to take a seat on the porch too. Yes, it's also yeah. nice. Yeah, we own my ho- my house. We own two rocking chairs. Have for years. Really, mm-hmm. and it's a place you don't mind waiting at. That's key. you don't. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff yeah. to do. Big checkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great right. pick, Jeff. It's to me, Jeff. You shit on it, but I'm gonna take them here. Great bread, great butter. They bring out yeah. the steaks. Texas Roadhouse, baby. Texas Roadhouse, and I know it's. I know a lot of people like it, and it's for the it's for the right reason. Like it's it's a good spot. Their bre- their bread and their butter is probably the best in the game. Mm-hmm. Great bread and butter. There's one right out on uh, in like South Elgin, over by my by mm-hmm. my parents on Randall Road. It's a great spot. Again, same thing. You, you know, like you know, like there are menu items that, that you're going to go there and you're going to get and you're going to be satisfied. Consistency. Mm-hmm. Consistency is key here. Predictability. It's a so, old Joel Quenville thing. You got to be predictable. There you go. So Texas Roadhouse is my play. In the second round, uh, White Sox, Dave, back to you. There's a couple areas I wanted to go with um, here. I did. I wanted a breakfast joint, and Cracker Barrel was was the pick. So I'm very upset that Jeff sno- uh, swiped in and snagged that from me. Um, but I am gonna go the um, steakhouse route. I'm going with Fogo de Chao. I think mm. it's it's a great. I won a Ooh. gift card there a couple years ago, um, like 2017 or so. And I went there. It was a fantastic meal. All you can eat and not, not drink, but it was everything I wanted to be and more. That that little thing where they just give you the chip, where it's like, it's, do you want yes, more yes, meat yes, or yes. less meat, or do you need to chew a little bit? Keep going. Yeah, you just Keep leave, it going. leave that shit on green. Yep. They just bring you all the meat. So <laughs> you walk out miserably full. We, I was in. I think this was my sophomore year of college. We went as a family to Fogo de Chao, um, and I, I took the train down. And from Lake Forest and went went to met my parents and like I think I got like meat poisoning. I ate so much, yeah, but I ate so much that I went back up and there was like a party. I had 
like maybe a half a beer and then just puked everywhere because <laughs> I was just like, You're I like guy. ate myself into like, I probably could have died. I mean, when that thing's green, the waiters come up to you like you're selling iPhones for 50 bucks. Yeah. They don't stop. Right. No. Yeah. They are like on your ass. And everything just looks good and smells good. Like when like you have it on red and then you see that waiter walk by nope. with something, you're Flip like, it. Oh, is that the rump rose? Flip that shit back over. Like you don't have to you don't have to talk you don't have yes. to talk, you just flip because you can't talk because your mouth is full. You just flip that chip back to green, pile your plate up. However, I do like Fogo, but I know we can't name picks. I think the other place is a little better. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Sure. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh Carl, you're up. I think I'm banned from the Fogo to Chow in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Shocks me none. 2003, the Which Poli- one? The one in River North. 2003, the Polish guy, my group of friends back home, like there was one. I, I feel like there was one. Everybody, my buddy Jonathan had turned 16, so his ma had gotten like a stretch limo and had fitted out with like a bunch of booze for us to go down, and then the limo would wait out in front of the steakhouse. Well, obviously, we had way too much to drink. And the thing that I puked up, hypnotic. Like the blue, oh, yeah, oh, the blue, and hypnotic. I puked it like in the, in the by the hostess. Hypnotic was great. Yeah, that was disgusting. Fogo de Chao, though, great memories. Would like to go back. All right, I'm up. Would pick is this ten overall? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna take an icon here. I'm gonna take a breakfast icon. This is a gr- anytime we go on vacation in the south. It's like a relation thing I have with my dad. We see it. I take. It, I see the Waffle House. I go to Waffle House. It's a great, great value breakfast spot. It's better than IHOP. It's better. Than, mm, I shouldn't name the other ones. I shouldn't think it's name the, the other t- ones. I'm sorry. It's it's at the top of the breakfast, like immediate go and sit down places. I will. It's s- a distant, distant. I don't even want to put it at two necessarily, but it's distant behind uh, Cracker Barrel. They're completely different experiences. It is, and I yeah, would. I, I, it's breakfast again. Like another. I've spent a lot of time it's in like the lunch. south. I've spent a lot of time at Waffle Houses. I'll say this about Waffle House probably the best people watching of any place you're going to go like the clientele <laughs> is something else it de- especially it. Depending, I know what you want to say depending on what time of night it, it's like the drunkest like you're you got a good chance of seeing a fight if you go to a waffle house at the right time of day waffle house is awesome mm-hmm. but anybody else and it's on the board obviously who's in the sheet but anyone else see waffle house and be like oh that that weirdly doesn't fit with the rest of these nope i no you i think, think it does i think it's right there i All think right. it, no, Wait, it fit with this does. yeah no, nah, that's that's sit down. Thing yeah, it's not. it's not. It's definitely sit down. Okay. I wouldn't. Even no, I, I'm not. I'm not arguing. Yeah. I, I Have you been to one? Like, yeah. yeah okay. Have. Yeah, and I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. It's very good. Yep. Icon is a good way to describe it. The sign. You want to talk about signage? Yeah. The sign. The Waffle House sign is is indistinct. Again, that's another. All my chain restaurant love is from one city in Florence, Vero Beach, Florida. But they have a Cracker Barrel with that. I love the use of that sky high sign. But that Waffle House signage is. It's that yellow. It just pops. Yeah, it does. Do you know it another fun pops. fact about Waffle House, too? It is uh, used to determine category storms and, like, hurricanes because they pride themselves on never closing. Like, it's something that they really live by and stick to. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, hey, we're open 24 hours. Like, if you know if a Waffle House is closed, then it's going to be a bad fucking It's storm. a hurricane. Yes, it's yeah. going to be really bad. Yeah. There's a great article about it. You can Google That's Waffle House and hurricanes. They also, my favorite... Uh, musician Sturgill Simpson wrote an entire song with I think with Stephen Colbert about the Waffle House. Hmm. Stephen Colbert, what? It That's was a- it was Sturgill Simpson and Stephen Colbert did a song about Waffle House. Why Stephen Colbert? He's from South Carolina, so he's he's but got he's a lot. Not of, a musician. He's a writer. He okay. I mean Sturgill Simpson. Random. It was like an SNL skit basically, but okay, they wrote a full okay. song. It's a parody song about the Waffle I House. I got you now. Yeah, I thought you meant like. Stephen Colbert is like on an album. With, nope, uh, it was on his show. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yes, yeah. just looking for some clarification there. All right, Carl, you need one more. So I think this is the most nervous I am on my board because I I'm comfortable with what what I want to do in the fourth and fifth, but this is where like things have really gotten thin. I think so. I want to take somebody that has big name recognition nationally, very deep menu. I have a ton of great personal experiences because several of these locations are branded as Grand Lux cafes. I'm taking a Cheesecake Factory. I want Cheesecake Factory. I want the I depth of the can't menu. I believe that just went in the third round. I didn't, I, I didn't have it on my list, but that's crazy to me that just went in the third I mean, that's a great – that's also an icon. Hmm. I didn't have it on my list either. I, I can see why I was drafted. I wouldn't have had it on my list. It's, it's a, a great menu. It, yeah, it's a good It's good food oh, for yeah. sure. I, I got a problem with the Cheesecake Factory. They Earth. just have too many things. 
There are too many things. They're all over the place. They don't do anything great. Like, you know, like, Jeff, look at your shirt. Those three things are better than anything at, at Cheesecake Factory. Like, they just, like, yeah. it, it deserves I, I, I to be drafted, but I personally, this is, I would not have drafted. This is Russell Wilson. This is not me doing, like, a bear shot, by the way. This is Russell Wilson in the third round for the Seahawks. Like, this is a, first of all, you want, like, I keep saying iconic, but I'm going to use it again. Like, the the buildings of Cheesecake Factory are unbelievable. They mm-hmm. stick out, like. Yeah, they do. That's true. They're massive landmarks. They have some, yeah, that's, that's a great pick. Well, it's by a lot of good malls, too, in Chicago. Is like the Cheesecake Factory is next to all the malls. And then, interesting enough, I bring up the Grand Lux Cafe on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. There's a Cheesecake Factory, and then two and a half blocks south, there's a Grand Lux Cafe, and they are literally the exact same place, just different You know, names. I never knew that. I never knew the like Grand the, Lux was almost, the I didn't know that either. The me, like, even the stuff they sell on the, item, or on the menu are pretty never similar. Never knew that. All right. Cheesecake fa- that cheesecake's awesome, by the way, too. Oh, at, I, uh, at their at factory. You would, I would hope it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's one thing they do. Give me a, do this I mean, third round is. I think this third I round. Okay, so I don't know, so I don't know about you guys looking at your list, but I think this third round is because fourth and fifth. There's a lot of niche stuff in here, mm-hmm. but yeah. there aren't that many heavy hitters left. And I still feel like we we want to. Yeah. White Sox Dave around the clock, bud. So I think so far I'm putting together a very well-rounded draft. I got the chicken wing place <laughs> with the great ambiance. I got the you know, so steakhouse so with all the ambiance. ambiance. What's so good about the ambiance? Uh, I mean the wood. I love the wood. Okay. Yeah. Nothing pine, else about pine, it. pine, you said, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, naughty pine, naughty I think, pine. is the official. Okay. Um, I got to go with the pizza joint. I got to go with Lumel Naughty's. It is. Is it on here? It's not on the list. Yeah. We said before the episode that yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, episodes it, okay. not on the list, but then it comes to us, and I don't. It absolutely. I've been. Fun. That counts. It's it, that I went the one time went to Chicago. I'll say that story for another time. It was a sad St. Patrick's Day story, uh, but I, I went. That counts for sure. Girl troubles. Not just ended. You want to talk about it? Spend, say, I'll just say quick. St. Patrick's Day went down to a basement to not. It went down like it's a club, like Club Forty Two or something. I'll think of the name. And we went to like the basement to go pee, and then ended up getting bottle service and a table in this basement for like twelve hours. It was fun, but didn't really experience St. Patrick's Day in Chicago. That's for sure. Uh, you were at uh, Sub Forty One. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and I, that's it. That place will suck you in because it is in a basement on the way to go take a bathroom, and then there's like a little club there. And they're like, "Hey, you guys want bottle service?" And you're like, "Yeah, actually, yes. I'll do that." So actually, that, that yes. happens to people, Jeff. Uh, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> Lou Malnati's has a lot of locations. But yep. it's a lot of just carry out and delivery. Yeah. That's a tough part. You sit down and you go to Lou Malnati's. You get a deep dish. It takes an hour to cook it. And it's also the guy who, like, shits on deep dish relentlessly. It's I'm kind of crazy. That's... The guy who also <laughs> used to work at a Lou Malnati, so he said he wouldn't eat it anymore. Yeah. The guy who I also said, I said I don't go sold out a hoodie way. that says deep dish is for tourists. I didn't put that on sale. Danny did. Danny did? Danny did. I don't think that's a fact. That is a fact. You can ask him, but regardless or not of my taste for it, I like the thin crust. I it was it's the butter crust that kind of grossed me out because they just throw sticks of butter and bake it into the crust. That's how you know it's good. And I I know, but it's kind of you don't want to see where the sausage is made or how the sausage is made. One of those things, and I saw how the sausage was made Mm -hmm. with the pizza. Okay. When I was in college and worked there, but Lou Malnati's, it's it's like it's a Chicago icon. Um, what was the word you kept using, Jeff? Iconic. 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 Okay. <laughs> I, I was, I used directionally Iconic. correct word. Um, no, you used the exact word. Literally it's, the exact same. It's not even directionally correct. It's like, just the word. Even Portnoy said until recently, I don't know if he out, if any of the places he went to for March Madness outscored it, but he says it's the best pizza in Chicago. And um, I, I disagree, but it's absolutely the best chain pizza out there. 100%. All right, Lou's off the board. It's to me. This might be a controversial pick. Oh, might not be. Let's find out. It's got a lot of name recognition, and I think it has overall one of the best items ever. I'm going with the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, and I'm taking Red Lobster. It's it's, it's so fucking disgusting, Ed. Listen, I, I understand. I it's understand. So bad. I understand that it has its flaws, but like we said, you always say that the hash brown is the best item at McDonald's, right? Yeah. The Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Like, okay. when, you, when, you, when you equate it like that, I'll put those up against, like, literally everything. I'd put the McDonald's hash browns against any single food item on the planet, like 
from Ugh. Morton's or Outback. They are that good. They are. They're not perfect. that good. I they enjoy are. them. They're not oh, that come good. On. I mean, I'm obviously embellishing, but I love those things. I'm telling you, if you stick to that and you stick to the shrimp scamp, you'll be fine at Red Lobster. Red so Lobster two is things? awful. Yep. That's it. Just stick to those two things. It's so nasty it's, to me. It's not my favorite, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it gets maybe a little bit of bad rap. Any seafood that isn't like, like elevated, right? Typically does. Like people always like that's like the fillet of fish mm. thing. I, I just made that up. That's called that's the fillet of fish theory. Anything that's not yeah. high end seafood kind of gets crapped on. But the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, you're right. That elevates it completely. And I, I, I think their seafood's like, yeah, you you know you're getting there. Yeah. I mean, bad. we did just do a podcast about sea spiracy and how, like, all that stuff is sourced. So yeah, I mean, and, kind and, of a problematic And, and, and can I tell you, too, as mm-hmm. well, like, I, I went on vacation one time, mm-hmm. and I talked to a guy who's, like, big in the seafood industry. He was, like, there for a conference. And he's like, listen, like, everything's frozen. No matter where the fuck you go, especially if you're in middle America, yep. you know, Chicago, Midwest. All seafood's fucking frozen. Yep. So, okay, like, Red Lobster just falls in line with the rest of them in a way. I mean, I know it's not as good as some of these steakhouses, but I... Uh, You're I, right. It's gross. I, you, this is like, you, now we have to make a, a thing of you with raccoon taste. We have one with Dave. But we need a we need an Eddie with raccoon taste. Red, Red Lobster stinks. Red Lobster stinks. It's bad. I... <laughs> Cheddar biscuits. Everybody always Cheddar biscuits. bitches I'll, at I'll me. I'll die on that hill. Everybody always bitches at me for the little anecdotes I give, but my dad doesn't fly, which I've said before, and he made me drive down to the Florida Keys with him one year, which is like a fucking million-hour drive from Chicago, and it sucked. But it was, it was I don't know, probably 8, 9 p.m. We're driving through um, uh, what's uh, Palm Beach, Florida. I think Palm Beach, Florida. Mm-hmm. And we went to a Red Lobster down there, and it was the worst food I've ever had in my entire life. And the restaurant was filthy. It was disgusting. Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Go That's all I'm going to keep saying. Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Jeff, you're up. Uh, I'm taking a place. I'm actually going to go seafood as well. And somebody on the panel I'm in, in uh, Chicago right now sent me a text on February 21st and said f- they finally tried it. And that was Eddie at the Bonefish Grill. He oh. finally had Bonefish Grill, which is a little – it's kind of in between like a Morton's in terms of like upscale and like an Outback. Bonefish Grill has outstanding food, like entrees, mm-hmm. but it has – what might be my favorite appetizer at a casual sit down, and that's the bang bang shrimp. The bang bang shrimp, I could eat that by the truckload. It's good stuff. That's another one. That's I'd put that in the melting pot category that you take like your yeah. high school girlfriend there for like an, for like a fancy <laughs> dinner. That's your fancy high school dinner spot. It is. It is again. It's in between. It's not high. It's not like high class for casual. Right. It's kind of in the middle. It's like you go in there and like dress like I dressed. Normally, you're going to be like, oh, I look like a little bit of a dick. But mm-hmm. uh, it's the Bang Bang Shrimp is worth the price of admission. Then the rest of it's good, too. But that appetizer is its one of the few where you're like, may I have to order a second one. Yeah. No, bone, Bonefish is great. It was on my it was on my list. I, did, I wasn't like convinced I was going to draft it, but I considered it. So good logo, too. Good, good. Very good logo. Good pick, Jeff. I've never heard of it. I don't think there's one out um, in like in Algonquin. Like if you take Randall Road never in north. Yeah. Next, next time you're in uh, next time you're in New York, we'll go over to. Sakaki's. And I do want to say this now that we are um, talking about restaurants. Brandon fucking Walker owes me a steak dinner. And I want all the masses when they hear this to go tweet at at Brandon fucking Walker and say, don't forget you owe Dave a steak dinner. Hmm. Okay. I don't even want the steak dinner. I just want to hold over his head that he owes me a steak dinner. The bonefish grill off the board. Chief, you're up. I need a breakfast spot or I want a breakfast spot. I should say there's only two, maybe three. In my opinion, I'm taking IHOP. I think IHOP has actually better food than Waffle House. Waffle House has like more character and more like uh, I would agree that it's more like iconic um, and a better better sign but IHOP like another thing like you know what you're going to get yep. the food's always good the stacks of pancakes they just keep them coming uh, so I, I love IHOP and it's another 24 hour place so you can go there any time of day get yourself a meal that you can trust and it'll be good and fill you up I, I, I love the IHOP Good milkshakes, unlimited French fries, too. That's a fun fact. They just added that. And you got the oh, on like National Pancake Day, they give away free pancakes, like all you can eat, right? Mm-hmm. Or something like that. They do do nice that. Nice little perk. You know what else they have that's actually quite good? And it's a hard thing to mess up, but a turkey club. So a turkey club with you a little- You love a turkey club. I do love a turkey you club. You do love There's a, a place club. over here, um, Grocer and Goddess in Wicker Park, one of the best turkey clubs you can find. Uh, but yeah, so I, I'm thrilled to have- 
IHOP there in. I think uh, it's, I think it's tough for uh, anything other than breakfast. I would agree, except for the Turkey Club. Okay. Turkey Club, you can't fuck That's up. That's a problem though. with that. Mm-hmm. It's tough, but you can get breakfast whenever you want. When yeah, you it's find breakfast yourself, all day. Like, craving, when you when are you at IHOP like t- testing out the sandwich portion? I, I mean, I don't know that I've been to IHOP in a long time, but I've definitely had the Turkey Club and it is good. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, more nine times out of ten. You're getting the pancakes, you're getting the eggs, you're getting you know all the sausages and bacon, all the breakfast. Yeah, you didn't food. draft it for the turkey club. You're no, saying it's nice that it does have yeah, a good turkey. Yeah, club. like if you go there at two o'clock, and you're like, you know what? I don't really feel like a a big stack of pancakes right now. You can turn to that turkey club. Is the turkey satisfied. club a triple decker? Typically, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, you got another pick. All right, I'm going with again. I don't know if this is going to be shit on or not. There is one on the east side of St. Charles, at least there used to be. Um, I love a good Mexican spot. I love the fajitas. I'm taking on the border. So oh, it's, uh, on there's the, one in Wheaton. There used order. to be one in Wheaton. Why? What's the reaction to that, Jeff? He likes. It. I just that's another one. There is there is. This is not a name I thought I would hear. Okay. Um, Didn't I, we go to one in Detroit, Ed? Yeah, yeah Ed and I, Ed, Marty, Dane. Was it Dana? Uh, Jack McCarthy. Jack McCarthy mm-hmm. and I went to uh, on the border in uh, Detroit when we were out there for the Super Bowl thing. And did you have a good meal? It's I love on the border. Yeah. I told everybody I'm like, hey, I mean, on the border, you like, can't get a you can't get a bad meal there. It's like the chilies and Mexican. Like, we food. know what all these are. Like it's it's. I solid. think I think on the border is significantly better. I would never go to a Red Lobster. I oh, would yeah. I would enjoy myself. At, Dude, on the border. Ed Red Lobster was a fucking point three on a pizza scale. That place stinks. Uh, you took Lou Malnati's and you made a living shitting. Who's on gonna it. hit him with the red? I Ed like Lobster. Ed. I won't <laughs> red eat Red, red Lobster. Lobster. If there's a Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza sitting in front of my face, I'll eat 10 of those pieces. On the border, chips are so good that now they just sell them at the grocery store. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a great good point. Sign. Yeah. So they have world, world-class world tortilla chips. That's a good so, sign. Yeah. You okay over there? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why am I not? You seem okay? like you're sad about people ripping on red lobster. Oh, no, so I don't much. care. I literally told you what I was doing. I like the biscuits, so I took. Okay, it. you just took the biscuits. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's all right. Fine yeah. So on the border, I think that's the first Mexican place taken yep. today. Other than unless, unless you want to count chilies, you don't like it. Latin no, American, was, even though they speak Portuguese I in Brazil. You were doing a fart noise. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay. No, he I was just a, gonna do that because someone was saying we farted in the microphone last week. So I was, just oh, gonna, yeah, yeah, okay. I was gonna plant fart. Someone noises, could be but. farting. Um, Jeff, you're up. Sorry. This is a, okay. This is the toughest pick so far because I got a couple in my head and I don't know where to go and I'm worried that I'll lose my upscale because I want an upscale on here because I do think this is what happens when we do our brackets. People. People are like, oh, like, how are you picking chilies over Morton's, right? Like, mm-hmm. how are you doing that? Like, it, it's better. But, like, I don't know how people are going to look at this. And in, in the end, I want to win the fucking vote. So I'm going to go upscale. I'm going to take a place that serves you their steaks on 500-degree sizzling plates, and I'm going Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Those are the two. So Eddie and I, I think we're <laughs> yeah. on the same page with there is two upscale. No? I was not. Wow. Okay. No, so those, not. to me, those are the two upsta- upscale chains, Morton and Ruth Chris. And maybe there's the, the, now I, I think dude. there's one other one that's only here. All right. In terms of can't go wrong, a fillet or a uh, strip with the shrimp on top. Like I just know at Ruth's Chris, and I don't. I've not been met many times. I just know that's going to be a ten out of ten meal. I'm going to be incredibly satisfied. The food is great. Can I tell you my only problem with it? I yep. feel like when I say the word, the name Ruth's Chris, I have like a lisp. So yeah, I don't like to it's say not, it. Absolutely. I don't like to say it. So I'm taking Morton's. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I can only can pronounce Morton's. I got shit on in January. I think it was for a snake draft because I had never heard of Ruth's Chris. And I went to one in Vegas when I was out there for New Year's. And I was like, this is one of the fucking best steaks I've ever had in my life. And uh, they're sizzling. They come oh, yeah. Out you sizzling can't you can't touch place. that 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 skillet or whatever it comes on because you'll fucking scald your hand off. And mm-hmm. they have the butter melting on top of it. It was fantastic. It was an Great unbelievable steak. meal. I didn't. I. Just because there's a lot of them, that shit, that Roots Chris stacks up to any steakhouse I've been to in Chicago. It's a good spot. Same with Morton's, actually. Mm-hmm. All right, Roots Chris off the board. It's back. It's back to me. Sorry. It seems like everyone's very interested in a fine dining aspect. I didn't. I didn't anticipate that. I wanted. I wanted one on my. Did list. you? Yeah. Okay. I like. I said. I still think there's one in there. There that, is one in there now. Seems that I'm scrolling like now you caught it. Again. You know what? I'm not going to take it, though. I'm going to take a different one. It's a nice place as well. And uh, certainly places like, you know, local places like Valari and La Scarola are, may, are better. But 
Maggiano yeah. always gets Maggiano's the job done. Good. He Ooh, always gets the yeah. job done. Great fucking bread, too. I just realized I'm making like a bread list at this point. They got Texas Roadhouse, <laughs> Red Lobster, and Maggiano's. Uh, Maggiano's bread is top tier. It's awesome. Anytime, like you just warm up bread, a little crusty warmed up bread is just so good. Top tier. Mm-hmm. Another great name. Like, if you yeah. haven't heard of Maggiano's and you're like, where are you going? What a Maggiano's Little Italy. They're like, oh, that yeah. sounds fantastic. Yep. Like, that's an easy sell. Yeah, a lot of people like to shit on it. It's stupid, as well. dude. It's it's lemmings who do that because Maggiano's is a fantastic restaurant. It's fucking good. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. Again, that's, that's I'm surprised you took it. I thought maybe Dave or I would. I was definitely ahead of Because on, yeah. that to me is like, oh, that's like a suburban nice night out. No, no, no. Yes, no, exactly. No, I know. Yeah. Like, that's a Woodfield. But even you're making me, the trip right. to Woodfield Mall. Sometimes you just gotta drop the fucking mm-hmm. bullshit. It's a good spot. It's a good like, spot. Stop. Why are we doing that thing? That's why I, I've I've backed. Um, it's not good enough for people. I don't. I've get backed it. Texas Roadhouse good. my whole life because like I have no issues at any point in time going to Texas Roadhouse. Even though oh you fucking poor person, that's not real steakhouse. It's like dude, it's fucking good. Just shut up. You agree? You're just too afraid to say it. Okay. Maggiano's. Yeah, he's right. Great spot for the boys too. They got a great meal. Where you could fucking get after it. Uh, White Sox, Dave. So I'm going to go my uh, little hoity-toity. Even though Fogo's is not a cheap place. But um, I'm going with Joe's Stone Crab. All over the nation. Um, I'm not a huge seafood guy, but I'll, I'll dabble on an ice luge, whatever they're called, when they bring that out. Um, I actually, about five years ago, went to a Joe's Stone Crab with our guy Nate out of the New York office. Um, the one in D.C., my buddy from high school was working there. He handed us the check. It was like 500 bucks or whatever it was, and it, he marked it down to zero. It was very nice of him. And it's a awesome steakhouse. I mean, if you like seafood, which I'm not too keen on, you can get a great seafood, seafood meal there as well. Um, so what's the ruling on this? I think there's only three locations. No, there's much more than that. Is there, no, Joe's? Joe's Stone Crab is like a hot. There's yeah. Joe's Crab Shack, which yeah. is all no. Over the place. I'm talking Joe's Stone, Joe's Stone Crab. Yeah, yeah there's, there's one in Chicago. Three. There's one in Fort La- or like DC. My, okay, and there's one in uh, Vegas, Florida. and and there's one in Miami. Well, the original. Yeah, that's like connected. There's only three. That's a I chain. I don't uh, think it is. Dave. That's are not. you trying to take Joe's Crab Shack? No, 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 no. Fuck no. That's disgusting. No. I mean, I'm. That's even worse than I mean, Red Lobster. It doesn't qualify, Jeff. I mean, what do you? What's your take? I'm looking. I mean. Okay, so if it has, if it has more than one, like it is a chain. Like I, I have to say that, but I feel like a chain. What's, has to what's be the like cutoff? 20. Like I mean, we've we done that before for our our like rankings and drafts and. Brackets. Okay, so like, I'll say this: I knew it wasn't on the list that we were going off of a Wikipedia, but I'd been to one in DC and I'd been to one in chicago and i know there's one in new york and so i just assume it's run by like, lettuce entertain you. yeah that's exactly my that's who so, my buddy worked for it's just not lettuce. though man three locations is just i feel not. like you there's, gotta have 10 like yeah it, like it's out dave sorry okay I'll i can't veto that. i mean i mean jeff delo took bonefish girl there's 215 bonefish i i'm sorry i just assume since i'd been to okay. like multiple no, it's right. your yeah. fault multiple locations mm-hmm. that it was there was more I, I wouldn't have taken it if i'd known there was only how many are there three that's it there's not one in new york city no guess how many cracker barrels there are uh 645 i was gonna guess 1500 Rico bosco joe joe seafood we went there <laughs> with dave and you know what else about that place i got i got food poisoning there joe's at joe's yeah. stone crab mm-hmm. well uh, that sounds like a personal problem all right i'm gonna good, shift though. and i'm gonna go to the capital grill um, that right was there, great one. yeah, oh, so right that's there. Not even the one I was thinking about. Really? Yeah. Right there on par with Morton's and um, you know high end chain steak steakhouses. I and think it's I think it's a notch below those two. Maybe a tick below, but I'm looking for a well balanced draft board, and uh, that's a that's the only other one I could go with if I'm not going with Joe Stone Crab. There's one other one. Capital Grill is routinely a one seed when we do the chain restaurant brackets. Okay. Because it kind of encompasses everything. Like where the steaks are great at the other place, but like they kind of like you feel like they're they're steak or capital kind of like covers the base. Yeah, yeah, that's it, it's good. I was between that Maggiano's, but I've had Maggiano's more so. Yeah, that, but Capital Grill's big time. Carl, you're up. All right, uh, we're kicking off the fourth round. I'm, I I was gonna take Capital Grill here, so and then it's kind of the last steak one where I was comfortable because I feel like steak. I'll go to you know you'd go to Ruth's Chris, you'd spend the money. You'd go to Capital Grill, you'd spend the money. But after that, it's like if I'm going to get a nice steak, I'm going to go somewhere a local house. that's yeah. you know mm-hmm. recommended by like a Jim Graziano or yep. something. Like hey, you got to call my buddy. It's a great steakhouse. 
So that said, I'm going completely away from Hoity Toity. Fourth round, I have to do it. I'm going to take Olive Garden. I like <sighs> the Olive Garden. I don't care. You're, I, you're building a good draft. Thank you. Um, I, I like having Olive Garden on the board here for a couple of reasons. Like I said, I don't get what I want here, so I have to take the next like best available for me. And as I size up this board, it's like there's some other names we go through the honorable mention here. I could reach in Hoity Toity, but instead I'd rather take Olive Garden. It's very simple. It's balanced. I don't have an Italian place. I've got a couple places that are a little out there right now, so I like Olive Garden. Reactions. You know, I haven't I, been I, in so long that I, I, uh, like, I can't even have a valid the, the, I don't think I've been I since I was I went once and I never went back. I just don't. You want to hype up places yeah. that sell oh. things because they're so good. Like the Olive Garden salad dressing is a often purchased thing at grocery stores. Like people love the dress. Their salad and their breadsticks are good. Their breadsticks are fucking phenomenal. You eat so many breadsticks that you can't even take a bite of your meal when it comes out. Your entree. I like the Olive Garden. I'm not afraid to admit it. I think it's a good pick. Okay. It's very basic, like, entrees. They do some, like, they, they try to get a little wacky and it doesn't work for them. But the entrees are basic. But, again, you're going there. You know what you're going to get? You're going to get, like, the fake, like, awning and, like, t- seat that nobody can sit at in the front. Um, you know, you have, you have like they have some decent drinks, I think. I never really drank there. Um, but you get get the cheese, you get the breadsticks, you get the salad. Like there's really not much more you can ask for at a place like this. It's like you said, Eddie. Like you know what you're getting here. Yeah, I I totally agree. Totally agree. And that's why I like I could sit here and just shit on Olive Garden relentlessly, but it's Olive Garden. Like you know what you're getting. Yeah, and I think that I think that's the one that kind of transcends the I know what I'm getting thing. It's like oh I know what I'm getting. I'm going to fucking yes, Olive Garden. So yes. uh, college years, extremely hungry on a budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's fourth rounder. It's a great pick, but I, I fucking hate Olive Garden. But right. you just it, get breadsticks and salad. That can just be your meal too. Like they're like okay sure. And that's my I don't have a lot of big location locations on my board yet. All right, so I'm, I'm can we get to the fifth round? You're up. You're I'm up. Not, uh, all right. This is this is one of my highest rated ones on the list. Underneath that, I have a breakfast place. I already have breakfast. I've got Asian. I already have Asian. There's a gimmick place that's below. I have the number one gimmick place left. I think I'm taking Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought they were defunct. Aren't they all dead? No. No. I don't believe so. No. no? Okay. I I will go to bat that that's a, that pick should be allowed. I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Rainforest is great. It's I mean, a, you they're dying. Don't get me wrong. They're closing left and yeah. right. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to be around for long. I thought, they, I thought the last one was the one. No, over, they have no. 24 locations. Now there's one in, in there's for sure at least one in Disney. It was okay. on the list. It was on the list. Yeah, I saw it on there, but I was like, I wasn't sure. 16 locations left. That's sad. Like, I, when you think of the fountain in the front, do you think hippo or do you think gator? <laughs> I think of the frog. <laughs> Yeah, I think, that's of, the, what I think, I think of, of the frog, frog. with the big buggy I think, eyes. I think of the waffle fries, the like the waffle shaped yes. fries. Those are fucking great. And then you know, every once in a while, they they hit that soundtrack and they have like the jungle sounds going. They got the you, you hear like the thunder monkey, and lightning, thunder every and half lightning, hour. the mood, uh, the monkeys hooting and hollering. So I was in, I was working this old job and it was a sales thing and um, somebody older older sales guy at the company was like, hey. There's somebody who works in our Wisconsin office. You should totally meet with this person. They've been with the company for 30 years. They're really good. We think you guys have a good personality, like match. Like it could be a good mentorship from a distance thing. So I reach out to this person. I said, hey, can we set up a lunch? Let's get together. Wait, you okay, Dave? The tribe just beans, or the socks just beans someone on the tribe, and I guess there's a brawl right now. Okay. Sorry. Oh. All right. Breaking news. So I call her up. We're on the phone. I go, let's get lunch. Let's talk. Where do you want to meet? And and she, I'm not even joking, dude. She was like, my favorite place is Rainforest Cafe. So can we meet at the one in, it was like Waukegan. I'm like, no problem. So she drove down from Wisconsin. And we had like one of the most serious meetings in my, at, at the time at this company I had. And like, you know, the guy's coming up like, here's your fruit punch. You know, and the fucking ape starts going into the song and dance in the pre-programmed lights. And that's where I planned out my career, my last job, Rainforest Cafe. I wore a suit. I wore a fucking suit. I might have been the only guy who wore a suit. And I had like a leather notebook. And we had a very serious conversation about like wealth and stuff. I didn't see this coming. Rainforest Cafe. You don't like you don't like the food though, right, Jeff, at Rainforest? I mean I couldn't even pretend to remember anything except the waffle fries. I went to I went to the one in downtown Disney, went to the one 
in Disney World, I think, as a kid. And then there was the one that I know was in the West Farmers Mall in Farmington, Connecticut, when I lived in Connecticut. When that thing moved in there, it was a fucking phenomenon. It was unbelievable. <laughs> People lost their shit. And you just walk through the mall and you got this, these trees coming out of the side. You get the, like, they had those little like gel tubes that you play with like in like the, the gift shop. I forgot yep. what they were called. Yep. Yeah, yeah. People know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I, but it, it's again, that I'll use the phrase. That's an, that's an iconic place. Yeah, and it's one of those things where if you've been once, like you'll never forget it. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't forget your yeah. Rainforest Cafe experience. <laughs> no. To be fair, I think we're at the point in the draft where, like, like I don't free, like, I've been to Rainforest Cafe maybe four times in my life. This isn't a place that I've, yeah. like, yeah. I argue know, I that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. I don't have, like, I would a major say that's a memory. lot of times. I think I've been there maybe twice. Dude, I used to try to take girls on dates to Rainforest Cafe in my early 20s. And I'd be like, what do you think about going to Rainforest Cafe for a couple laps? <laughs> Just to get like a gauge. It'd be like, wouldn't yeah. it be funny? You want to go get a couple kitty cocktails and go sit? And uh, that was like an 0 for 20 thing that got brought up. Like, I, I, I feel never, like they would jump on that. Ever yeah, that's so, it's so corny that it should work. And if the girl doesn't say yes to that yeah. and isn't flattered, she's a fucking fuckwad. And fuck that. Yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe I, that's maybe that was my target audience in my early twenties. Yeah, fuck actually, fuck yeah. Was. that's I, I didn't see it going that way. Interesting board. Were no. you gonna go that way? No, I was not. Okay. I don't uh, think. Let's ask Dave. You're up. You guys would have Follow any me. idea I was gonna go this direction for my last pick, and once I say it, you'll be like, "That makes perfect fucking sense." I am going Peaks. with Old Country Buffet. That is elite macaroni Jeez. and cheese. I know it's scuzzy. I know it's poor people shit. I know it's white trash, but it is. <laughs> Awesome. I've never you go been. in there, you lie about your <laughs> age if you're with your parents, which they did with us because they were fucking idiots. Like, hey, how old are they? Oh, uh, they're three years younger. Than... I mean, what? OCB? OCB. <laughs> that is elite macaroni you and really cheese. You really want Old Country Buffet on the graphic? I want Old Country Buffet. <laughs> you, and you, it... took, you took the runniest dump on Red Lobster for being disgusting, and you just... Red Just Lobster teeters. is like I mean, inedible. I'm fine with the if, pick. I think it's a good pick, but I mean, you. Can, I don't think you can pick Old Country Buffet. But I don't see just, here. Oh, I didn't yeah. say this about like, Red Lobster. Come, thank I you, Jeff. At least some of the fucking has the balls around here to say it. I don't that trust crazy. Okay? seafood well, very on. often. That's crazy to sit there and yeah. take the runniest <laughs> dump on Red Lobster and then take OCB. I <laughs> loved OCB growing up. And then when we got to college, we'd be on road trips or baseball. We would we'd fucking go to every no. single OC, OCB on the planet. Um, but elite macaroni and cheese at elite. Not even Golden Corral? Like, we would hit those two, of course, yeah. Like, I mean, OC, OCB is like, uh, like the, that's the McDonald's wow. of like, buffet-style wow. sit-down places. It's the Microsoft. Wow. Everything else like might be better wow. quality, but this is by far the most recognizable. Wow. OCB. OCB. Did I did not needed, see it coming. Hey, I know you guys I did didn't it. Either. I, I didn't, didn't know we were going to do I a buffet needed, category. I needed a trash bag, white trash pick that's near and dear you to me. You got it. And got I, it. I got the number one overall Congratulations. trash bag, white trash I feel like pick. I'm losing my mind right now. Prediction. There's not going to be a run on buffets now to end the draft. That's no, my prediction. There's not because it's to me now. There's actually a lot of heavy hitters left. You Big think? time. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot oh, yeah. of heavy hitters left. Like, I'm looking at my last spot. I'm like, I don't know where to go. Yeah, there's a lot of heavy hitters left, but I'm not going to go with one. I'm going to go with one that's a little less known, at least I think so in the Chicagoland area, but I think it's real fucking solid. It's also got a great inside. It's got a million TVs. I'm going to go with Miller's Ale House. Have you guys ever had it? Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's I actually mean, very fucking solid for a chain spot. Never been. There's not an ounce of character about the place, though. No, but but at the same time, and I'm going. I was trying to make some character with my picks. Like that's such an easy pick. Yeah, it belongs. It's good, <clears throat> but it's fucking Miller's Ale House. It's it's just there. Dave, what? It's insane trying to argue with you. Why is that? How, what did I say that was wrong? It's the it's the most bland place ever. It's great food. Perfectly. Dave, it's got a million. TV, like it's a good so spot does to Hooters, watch a game so does too. ESPN Zone, so does every just, fucking sit down place. ESPN ever. Zone, <laughs> defunct. I know. I just that's why I said it because it was in my brain because I saw it's defunct. Do you, Jeff? Do you agree with that? No, I think Miller's House is a great pick. I like Miller's Ale House. It Miller's Ale House, yeah. But like, this is what I'm saying. Like, when we're drafting chain restaurants, you got to take in not like the food's only a part of it. It's like you got to take the experience with it. That's why I draft thought. Draft how you want to draft. I, 
I, I mean, Miller, like I Miller's said, Alehouse is just. I think it's very bad. underrated. And no, it's good food for sure, mm. but it's just like it's it's wallpaper. I guess to White Sox, Dave, if it's wallpaper. Uh, Jeff, you're up. Um, I'm. I was between two here. I won't say the name. Eddie, you and I have talked about one of them quite often. I'm not going to pick it because I, I feel like I need something that's a, like I, I like I'm diversified. Outback, Cracker Barrel, Bonefish, Ruth Chris. This one kind of fills the gap. Uh, and I mentioned unlimited fries earlier. They got unlimited fries. That's Red Robin. They got the good seasoning. Uh, if you don't know, Stephen Che says it's a pro move to get unlimited broccoli at Red Robin. <laughs> This what? is this is the TB12, Stephen Che. Insanity. That was pre-TB12. Insanity. Uh, I like Red Robin. I think they have very serviceable, good burgers. But, again, I'm a French fries guy. Unlimited French fries. And that's incredibly hard to pass up. And I like their fries, and I like their seasoning quite a bit. Uh, they got TVs there, too. You want to talk about TVs, Eddie? You know, they got some stuff. You can watch some games and shit. Yeah. Not sure you can like, go there for the big game, but, you know, it's an option. Um, I like I like Red Robin quite a bit. I left a lot on the board here. There are some there's big time so, hitters, some but the big, Unlimited Fries does it for me. Shout out Burgers and, a good and Brews, jingle. Steve, uh, Steve Robinson. Who, Yum. Uh, yeah, the, I was trying to remember who Yum. that was. It was hmm. All right, Chief, Mr. Irrelevant. You know, good pick, by the way, Jeff. Yeah, it is a good pick. There's just so many left on the board. There's, like, big ones left there on is, the board. There is huge names. Ones. Big names. This is the this is the part where like I always fuck up because I know there's a way to do it on the graphic that'll look better. That's why I went with OCB because it looks good on the bracket. No, because on the graphic because I was All picking right. near and dear to my heart. Well, I'm gonna go to the, one of these that I've been to probably the most recently. Here we go. Yard House. Yard House. It, there's, yes. there's one over on uh, on Clybourne by the New City. You know that place? Yeah, yeah, where the, yeah. where the, so they have they, a, they, they, Oh, I, I have been there. It's good. They, yeah. Well, there's, yeah. there's the movie theater right there. So yeah. you go there for a few apps, a few drinks beforehand or after you head into the movie. Uh, that's my yard house experience. So it's, it's it, like I just go. Good spot. All the time. Because if I go to a movie, I'm probably going there and then I'm probably getting a snack or two before or after at yard house. So I go to yard house all the time. I love yard house. Uh, but there, I'm, so that one's like a personal pick, but there are monsters still on the board. So I feel like we should, unless yeah. anybody has no. Jeff, you say you like yard house. Yeah. I, when I think of yard house, I want to make sure I get it right, but I'm pretty sure yard house has the largest, the most draft beers they that do. you can get. any. It's, it's the largest selection of draft beers I think in the world. Their bar not, is like 80 feet long, and it's just to accommodate yeah. the, the beers. I think California, it's one of those California places that started to move east. They have one opening up right by the office, and the pandemic delayed it. And I'm excited to go and just show people who haven't been before because Yard House is great. It's, yeah. it's moved over. Obviously, like been. you said, you have one by you. A couple, there's like one or two in Austin. But it, like when I – my family lived in, in Southern California. I lived in Orange County for a while, and like I think of the Yard House. That's, that's what always popped in my head. That's a, a great Mr. Relevant. But you're right, because there are some. I'm looking at my list of leftovers. So I'll do there are it. Some names. I'll go through everybody's draft one more time, and then um, we'll we'll do some. We'll do the big names at the end there. Carl Benihana, Waffle House, Cheesecake Factory, Olive Garden, Rainforest Cafe, White Sox, Dave Hooters, Fogo de Chow, Fogo de Chon, as they always say on the radio, which always throws me off. I don't know if you've ever heard that. No, it's pronounced Chon. Maybe it's Portuguese thing. Uh, Lou Malnati's, the Capitol Grill, Old Country Buffet, Eddie Chili's, Texas Roadhouse, Red Lobster, Maggiano's, Miller's Ale House, Jeff Outback Steakhouse, Cracker Barrel, The Bonefish Grill, Ruth's Chris, Red Robin, Chief Morton Steakhouse, The Melting Pot, IHOP, On the Border, Yard House. Honorable mentions, uh, TGI Fridays. Yeah, Applebee's, all that shit. Yep, Ap- Applebee's. All those. Mm-hmm. I, I, the worst one was in Ruby Tuesdays. Just garbage. <laughs> I don't know if I I'm mean, there uh, in 20 what years. What about Buffalo Wild Wings? I, I kind of yeah. felt them in the fifth, but then I was like, I think that's kind of a pick that puts pe- that pushes people away, though. Buffalo Absolutely. Wild Wings, yeah, yeah, I think it pushes people away I more watched, than it pulls people I'm in. Not a big the deal. I'll, I'll Illinois walk, comeback over Arizona at Buffalo Wild Wings when I was 16. P, P. F. Chang's. I'll walk a tightrope there because I don't know if like they're still sponsoring stuff, but I'm not a beat. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to say. Buffalo That's Wild why, Wings and yeah. back, back in the day. Yeah. There's a couple of my, there's, there's a couple of local. I couldn't go local because I kind of want to win. Uh, Chewy's in Austin. Though Chewy's is now in the, it's been in the Midwest for a while. I've heard of that. I don't think I've heard of it. Next place. 
There's definitely some in Illinois. Chewy's has a creamy jalapeno dip, and they also do fresh tortillas, mm -hmm. which is the key to any Mexican place. Fresh tortillas, yeah. got to have a big wheel of flour tortillas. If you're in the Midwest, East Coast, Florida, Chewy's, go try it out. It's it's a chain, but they have creamy jalapeno dip and fresh tortilla chips. Great. Uh, Pluckers was the other one. That's a wing bar in Austin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, we didn't like PF Chang, CPK, BJ's, and last night I'll say Cheddar's was the one mm -hmm. I was talking about, Eddie. Yep. CPK I fucking love Cheddar's. The, PF Chang's. So bad. The other high end steak place that I was thinking of was Cooper's Hawk. Right? Yeah. The winery. Have you been there? That, I feel like that's a Chicago place, or like yeah, Chicago suburbs, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. There's one out in Naperville yeah. right next to my uh, A lot of suburban house. moms drinking the Cooper's Hawk wine. Yep. Uh, just quick, I had Dave and Buster's, Chuck E. Cheese, Baker Square, oh, McCormick and & Schmick's. Baker Square, I'm a sucker for Baker, Baker Square. Square. I know it's like well, not great. Baker like Square's the pie, great, right? though. The and, pie's awesome. That's a high school thing, too, for yep. us. That was a big high school thing. So we had... Dave and Buster's, I'm surprised, didn't get picked. Yeah, that would have been a good great, Mr. Irrelevant, too. The one when I asked in the beginning or pre-show... It's like, does it have to be on that list? Because I, I like Colonial Cafe, which mm -hmm. is another Western suburbs. I don't yeah. know how many locations, but I figured you would know. Yeah, where it is. I do. Yeah, and yeah. People drive. They have this thing called the kitchen sink, which is yeah, just like the, the ice cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like people will get a bumper sticker being like, I, I ate, ate the, the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. The Colonial the, Kitchen Sink. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Longhorn. Longhorn. I've we drafted that, didn't we? No. no. no Quaker Longhorn. Steak and Lube, another one. I was yeah. good. I was down for my last pick. Um I think everybody Slimy. at this point knows I love shitty diner food, Perkins. Perkins but uh, is good. IHOP was picked, so I was like, ah, I'll go with the best buffet. Denny's. You get that Grand Dave, Slam breakfast. Is Dave really shot either. himself. I like Denny's more than IHOP. Do you really? Yeah. I, I still like IHOP better, but Denny's, Denny's is good. I think you they're just Denny's. the exact same thing. Bad wedding experience. It's just Denny's tough. But Another iconic name. Mm -hmm. Good breakfast. I think this place sucks ass, but people love it. Fuddruckers. I've never been I used there. to love it when I was young. Then I got older and my taste buds matured and I thought it was disgusting. We, and I'm not going to look at this. Uh uh, Friendly's is another one in the, for East Coasters. I'm going to shout out Friendly's, though those are all like gone now. Johnny Rockets. We really didn't touch on many Italian plates, like like Macaroni Grill, Carabas. Yep. Like those didn't even get a, a What was the second one you said? Bertucci's to give you dough at the table. That was what, isn't, that Bertucci's is defunct, too. There used to be one right by my grandparents' Pretty house. Close. Yeah. But that was a thing. Like we would go visit my. They lived in uh, Westport, Connecticut, and that was like if you're like six years old and you, you don't have to color, you get to play with a ball of dough and like throw that it, at, throw it at your sister and stuff. So that was that was a great experience. <laughs> and Love then my it. last thing was I, I I think Texas Day Brazil is better than Fogo. I thought you were gonna say that. Yeah. Texas what? Texas Day Brazil. Texas Day Brazil. I don't. I've never heard of it. It's, oh it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. All you can eat. Yeah. Has anyone ever been to a Sizzler? No, yeah. I have not. Yeah, like, there was one on uh, on Cicero. Okay, I've there never been. But I feel like that one there. used to be a thing in like pop culture. Like All I knew it was from was uh, yeah. Happy Gilmore. Yeah, you want to go to Sizzler, get some grub. Yeah, it's uh it's like OCB. Yeah. Oh, oh it's like that. Go. Okay. Yeah, Ponderosa was another one that I have an affinity for. Did I say CC's? CC's Pizza. CC's Pizza's all right. Oh, it's so bad. CC's Pizza's all right. There's a lot. That's all you can eat pizza, right? I think like there's a lot bucks. of these places where we would gladly sit down and eat. If you were traveling, you had to stay at a hotel, and then like within walking distance in the parking lot of the hotel, there were a couple of these places, right? Like that's yeah. where a lot of these come up to play. A like. lot of these for me in my adult life are big eat alone places. Bury your head in your phone. And yeah, just eat alone because you're traveling for work. Yeah, not because you just want to go to. No, it's like I'm on the road. Yeah. It's not like Chief is just pulling up the melting pot table one. No, I would not, I wouldn't do melting pot alone, but I would do basically IHOP alone, on the border alone, yard house alone, all these places, Outback. All right. Sounds like we're good. Sounds like we're good. Yeah. You know, I'll, no, let me make a comment here cuz I feel like our guests we're we're actually getting to the point where the guests we're in their world. Yeah. Well, that's by design. Yeah. But our guests, we're really bringing in subject matter yeah. experts mm -hmm. now, where I feel like that wasn't something we had always done on the draft, where mm -hmm. it was like, oh, so like, Jeff, this is your sweet spot. We expect you to win. You're not I was telling me that. I fucking nervous when Eddie texted me because, like, I, I can't, like, this is and my thing. That hurts thing. your brand if, if you put up a poor performance. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm very, I got all my picks. I was very happy. Thanks, Jeff. I might get out back tonight, honestly. I might get out. There that we go. Onion is so It'd be great. interesting because people fucking love this shit. Yeah, I don't know. This, who's this will win. be a. There's no clear cut winner debated. at all. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, oh, people, the people are going to hate all of our fucking picks. Well, I, think oh, Dave, yeah. I think Dave's out with old country but fam. I'm just going to say that. Hey, I mean, I was trying for variety, and I got lots of variety. Backing up uh, Capitol Grill with a <laughs> trash bag. <laughs> Capital Grill. Don't tell me you wouldn't go there and eat mountains of mac and I know, cheese. I guess it's not like I wouldn't leapfrog Golden Corral and spokesman Jeff Foxworth. I mean, that's a, it's gold, Golden Corral is the exact same thing, but Old Country Buffet, I feel like, has more name recognition. Sorry, I, and See, I think Golden Corral does. Golden Corral is like all the commercials yeah, they have, Corral the chocolate does. fucking power. The chocolate fountain, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. I feel like Chocolate Fountain should be canceled post-COVID. No. You think those are coming back? I don't care a fuck about them, but <laughs> I just don't want things to be canceled. Me neither, but I feel like, like I don't people, want anything to change. People, if they weren't hesitant about going up to that Chocolate Fountain before, you yeah, might be now. <laughs> sure are now. More for you and me, Ed. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Jeff, as always, thank you. Uh, look out for that Thanks, dozen guys. tournament coming up soon. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. See you then.